Pro football has its Super Bowl. Baseball, the World Series. For professional bass fishing fans, there's the Bassmasters Classic, the greatest fishing show on earth, the World Championship of Bass Fishing. Birmingham, Alabama, an overflow crowd of 18,000 jammed inside the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center Coliseum to cheer the bass catching ability of the sport's next superstar. Win this fish off and your life changes. Instant fame and fortune. A classic victory pays $50,000. But the championship can be worth a million dollars in sponsorship and endorsement fees. Not to mention a thousand dollars a day how-to seminars. Cast for cash, it's big business. Winning the Bassmasters Classic is every bass angler's dream. Robert Hamilton Jr. of Brandon, Mississippi has lived in a dream world for the past year after winning the 1992 World Championship. Now Bob Hamilton's got a wake-up call. It's time to defend his classic crown. The truth is we would all be out here fishing for $50 and a trophy. Uh, what it's done for us is given me the financial stability that I can leave home, know that my kids can eat that week, and I don't have to worry about the financial pressures that I had, you know, this time last year. It's a good feeling to know that I can go into next year and the year after that without really having to worry about performance. And once you take that pressure off of your performance, I think you'll see a, a, a lot better fishermen come out of it. The 1993 Bassmasters Classic returns to Lake Logan Martin, site of Bob Hamilton's impressive victory. His catch, a three-day creel of 21 bass, weighing 59 pounds, six ounces. Returning to the same waters would seem to be an advantage. If Bob Hamilton has any advantage, it may be the fact he won the 92 Classic fishing a deep water pattern. Well, I don't think a lot of people are comfortable fishing deep. I think there'll be a lot of guys start out fishing deep the first day of the tournament and probably get away from it pretty quick. Uh, you know, it, you can go a long time out here between bites and, you know, it kind of gets boring sometimes and you get kind of panicky. And the conditions are different. In fact, when we were here pre-fishing three weeks ago, it was basically 10 degrees warmer than it was during the actual tournament a year ago. And being 10 degrees warmer, what that's done is it's pushed all the fish deep, or I feel the majority of the fish. Now, while we were gone, uh, in the last week, they've had rain, the water temperature's cooled back down, and it's about exactly what it was last year during the tournament. It's dingied up some. I feel there's some fish that have moved back up shallow. Now, whether there's gonna be enough fish to be a factor, I'll probably be able to tell you after the tournament's over. And if the bass are on a crankbait bite, David Fritz, a Lexington, North Carolina pro, is high on the favorites list, even though this is his first classic appearance. The secret to this lake is being at the right place at the right time. And it's sort of what I call blitzing the fish. You got to be there when they're there. And it's something that I'm pretty proficient at. Uh, you know, you can't always hit them on the head, but maybe with a little luck, uh, I'm going to be able to do okay in this. Uh, crankbase is going to be a, a big deal. Uh, I'm not sure that a crankbase is going to win this tournament. It's probably going to take a, a variety of, of two or three lures. I still think that this time is probably going to be on structure. Paul Elias of Mississippi, the 1982 Classic Champion, is confident. He's caught 20 pound plus stringers in pre practice here. I'm going to catch a few fish on a worm and a jig, but the majority of them are going to come on crankbaits. And, uh, but, you know, I'm not going to be fishing that deep. I think the majority of my fish will be caught up the river above the I 20 bridge, and they'll be on, you know, they'll be on shallower ledges at less than 10 feet deep. See that? I can't get the glove, but there it is. There he is. That glove did a good job, didn't it? Look at fishy blind in one eye where I missed him last year.
23rd Annual Bassmasters Classic here on Logan Martin Lake, just outside of Birmingham. This is gonna be one of the toughest classics we've ever had. Last year, we had an all-time record catch. This time, it may be a little tougher. Water conditions are slightly different, and I can tell you this, Robert Hamilton, a tremendous champion who's defending his win last year at the Classic here, will have his work cut out for him. It's gonna to be tough. I know Bob Hamilton is ready, as are the other 40 anglers. It should be an exciting tournament. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after we get these fishermen off for the first flight. All right, make sure you check one more time. Check the tail switch. Make sure your line vest are zip and strap. Leave your line on so that you can get the Logan Martin Lake, day one of the 1993 World Championship of Professional Bass Fishing. 41 anglers, the best of the best, 36 pros qualifying from the year-long Bassmaster Tournament Trail, and five Wrangler Anglers, the top bass club fishermen from the Bass Angler Sportsman Society's Federation. They'll go rod to rod for the next three days on this 15,200-acre Coosa River impoundment, located east of Birmingham, Alabama. Bassmaster's classic rules provide for seven bass, the daily limit, that must measure at least 12 inches long. Only artificial lures are used, and penalty points representing valuable ounces are deducted for any dead fish. We're on the water with five Bassmaster's TV crews to follow the action. And again this year, we'll have the expert on the water commentary of a former Bassmaster's classic champion. Hi, I'm Tommy Martin and I'll be along in the boat with you this year, bringing you the play-by-play -play action as the 23rd Annual Bassmasters Classic unfolds. I guarantee that's bass. Bob Hamilton is back on one of his favorite uh, fishing spots where he, one of the holes that he used to win the 1992 Bassmasters Classic, but things have changed a little bit for Bob. You know, ever since uh, Logan Martin was announced for the 93 Classic site. A lot of the contenders have been up on Logan Martin, planting brush and putting obstacles in the water, hoping to concentrate the bass on these offshore structure spots. And actually, some of Bob's spots probably have too much brush on them now, and he's not able to work his crankbaits and spinnerbaits through that brush quite as effectively as he was last year when they were more void of brush. Here Bob has a fish on. He's looked like a pretty good fish. He's keeping that rod down low. A little fish. Sit made comment it's a small fish it's a keeper though that's bob hamilton's first fish of the morning so i know he's glad to get that first one behind him denny brower has started off again in the park area fishing boat docks this boat dock pattern produced over 51 pounds and second place for denny brower last year but this morning things are different the bass aren't biting brower is having to cope with an armada of fishing fans and boat wakes make it more difficult to flip a jig under the docks. The spectator boats concern Shaw Grigsby, too. He wants to look good. performance drill. Rick Clun is sticking with a crankbait, a lure that put him fourth last year. But today, the bass are running small, too short for the 12-inch size limit. Kevin Van Dam, the 1992 Bass Angler of the Year, has hooked a keeper, but this one won't show up at this afternoon's weigh-in. As expected, David Fritz is deep cranking and, as predicted, doing well.
Oh, Lord in heaven. And Paul Elias has changed locations. He's moved way up the river above the interstate bridge, and Paul's waiting on the current to start moving. Go back. And There's one angler way up river, Tommy Biffle of Oklahoma, who's praying that the Alabama Power Company will not generate and release water from the Neely Henry Dam. Current or moving water won't help Biffle. The resulting rising water would kill the fishing in Ohatchee Creek, located less than a mile below the dam. Biffle's flipping a half ounce jig and soft plastic trailer. The bass are holding on wood, stumps and brush along the creek bank. And this bass is the one Biffle's been really looking for. This size fish can win the Bassmasters Classic. The first day of competition is through, and all 41 oh. contestants will agree that today was one tough fishing day. I mean, I don't know. I, I caught a few big fish, you know, in practice, and I, I'm just, you know, I know how hard it is, so I'm just going to fish for a few a day and hope I can catch a few of them big ones. I didn't catch them a day. You know, I have no answer for it. Uh, you know, I guess you can blame it on all kinds of things, but, uh, you know, I just didn't get any bites. I've been pretty much cranking like I did last year for three solid days now and have not stuck a two-pound fish. Either I've got to figure out how to crank a lot deeper than I'm cranking, or I've got to go shallower, and I, I've got to do one of the two. I don't know which yet. I should have had a limit of fish. I don't have a fish. Uh, it's just one of them days. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back with the 1993 Bassmasters Classic Day One weigh-in from Birmingham, Alabama. Do it. Over six. The test of the best. The 23rd annual Bassmasters Classic. Big bucks and big pressure. Rookie qualifiers usually are just happy to get here. They seldom adjust to the hoopla. But David Fritz of North Carolina is not a rookie bass pro, and he's got a seven bass limit to weigh in. All right, here we go. Here we go. Roll it. New leader, folks. Look at the weight. 17 pounds, 10 ounces. Bingo. David Fritz takes the early lead, but Oklahoma's Tommy Biffle has a big bass in his bag and a seven bass limit. All right, here we go. Hit the scale. There you are, 17 pounds, 14 ounces, folks, there you are. Tommy Biffle's in the lead, but just barely. Four ounces ahead of David Fritz. And Arkansas's Ron Sheffield looks like a threat. Let me tell you, this guy's deadly. Six bass all allowed. Let's watch the scale now, folks. This could very well move him up here near the lead. 13.10 is his weight. 13.10, that puts you right up there. When the fishing's tough, put your money on George Cochran, 1987 Classic Champion. George Cochran. Look at the weight, folks. 15 pounds, six ounces, right up there. Bingo, George. That seven bass creel puts George in third place. Jay Yellis of Texas has a limit and a good fish. There's a large size that won't quit. I too remember he's the largest bass and it's $1,000 bonus money for the largest bass of the day. Your limit weighs 12 pounds, zero ounces. Let's give him a nice hand, people. Good job. All right. Put you right Yellis, in the race. a three-time classic yeah, qualifier, moves into contention and fifth place. There's a $1,000 bounty for the daily big bass. And Larry Williams of Ohio may just claim the reward. This is a kicker, and this is what can blow everybody up. Kicks him way up there, 11 pounds and 10 ounces. Remember, this is a $1,000 bass if it's over 5'2". My Lord, it's 6 pounds, 7 ounces. Folks, here's your new leader. Congratulations, Larry. Tommy Biffle, the 1990 Classic runner-up, leads the first round of the 23rd Annual Bassmasters Classic Championship. A tough test. Only nine limits were weighed in. A year ago, Logan Martin yielded a classic record of 73 limits for the tournament. Day two of competition. The 1993 Bassmasters Classic. Cloudy, overcast skies. The possibility of rain. The conditions should improve the chances for the early morning bite on Logan Martin Lake. George Cochran in third place hopes so. He's fishing a topwater buzzbait pattern. He got it that time. David Fritz in second place is getting strikes, but the bass are coming unhooked. 
However, he's working a concentration of fish. And as former classic champion Tommy Martin explains, that could be to David's advantage. David is fishing out on the main lake uh, of Logan Martin, fishing deep diving crankbaits. And uh, this type of water, in my opinion, replenishes fish real quickly. There's a lot of bass that live out in this area of the lake, and David's fishing for numbers. There's just, there's just enormous populations of spotted bass in this lake, and the type of water David is fishing will replenish quickly. Now, Tommy Biffle, on the other hand, he's fishing in the back end of a creek. Uh, he's fishing in very, very shallow water. And during the month of August, I just really don't believe there's many fish living back in that type area. What I want to do is just pitch that jig up there around a tree or something, sit there and shake it and rattle it a little bit, and work it and crawl it over the cover real slow. Most of the bites, best I can tell so far, most of the bites are on stumps. It's about half and half, but I, I believe the, if you had to pick one, they're, they're on the stumps better. Little guy. It's not very big, but he'll work till I get seven. David has another fish on. This this is a pretty good little keeper here if you can get it to the he boat. Might measure, I don't know. Big ones get off, little ones can't make them get off. Ah, that fish looks like it'll measure. David Pritz has two bass in the live well now. But he's lost two good fish that would have weighed about six pounds, which would have really given him a boost. His momentum is bound to be still a little bit low after losing those two key fish. Now let's go back to Tommy Biffle. They're running a lot smaller today. That's two smaller keepers for Tommy Biffle. He's still in the lead, but David Fritz has got another one. He ain't that good, but he's... This fish is yet to come up. Still pulling and tugging around the boat, all the way to the back of the boat. David's really working him. He's fighting him carefully. Doing an excellent job of handling that fish. Got a real limber rod. Him up. It's not a real big fish, but it's a good one. Boy, he was a fighter. That's the third keeper in the box for David Fritz this morning. George Cochran switching between his buzz bait and a spinner bait along a weedy shoreline in the Chuckalaka Creek area. Yeah. Now back to Tommy Martin alongside David Fritz. Yeah, maybe he won't jump. Still on. Still got him. Oh. Man, the fish is going absolutely crazy. He's doing everything he can do. He's going around and around the boat, just leading him, trying to get him in. There he is. He got him. Atta boy. Jeez. <laughs> he just barely took the bait. Barely got the bait. I don't know what's wrong with these fish. I'm fishing around them, I guarantee you. They just ain't, they just ain't doing it. That's bass number five for David Fritz, and it's uh, 1242. He's probably got about eight and a half to possibly nine pounds and still needs uh, two more bass for the limit. Tommy Biffle is struggling. I can't believe I hadn't had some better quality bites. Come on, fish. There's a little bit better fish. But David Fritz has a better one. He's trying to lead him around and let him wear himself down. He's taking him easy with him. Those treble hooks, though it may seem you have an advantage with treble hooks, you actually lose a lot more fish with treble hooks. He's just trying to let him wear himself out, let him wear down and Kind of belly up where you can I got him hooked pretty good. Keeping he his rod low, trying jumping. to keep the fish from jumping. We don't want him to jump. And keep him in the water. His chances of landing are much better. Oh, he's a nice one, too. That, that fish is about two and a half pounds. 
two and a quarter to two and a half. I knew it would if it ever start that water. The sky's starting to lighten up, as we said a little bit earlier, and the sun is, uh, look like it may come out, and the fish are starting to bite. David's caught two uh, bass now and about uh, five or six casts. Tommy Biffle's got five bass. He needs a big bite. A little better fish. This 1993 hey. classic is shaping up as a seesaw battle between flipping and cranking. David Fritz is cranking up another one. He's got his rod tip down, playing him real careful. It's pretty good fish. Gonna have a little trouble with him. Oh, he's oh, really man. pulling. He's really pulling. I have barely got him. Barely got him hooked too. He took the back hook. David had just switched over to the white uh, Pose 400 series plug when that bass hit. He changed colors on him and tricked one into hitting. I'm telling you, I have barely got this fish. He's leading him around the boat, just trying to wear him out, trying to, trying to wear him down, hoping he won't jump. Fish is staying down so far. He hasn't tried to come yeah, up. Yeah, if he jumps, he's gone. He's trying to keep him down, lead him around. Bass fight pretty hard for a short while, but they don't, they don't have a lot of endurance. They'll wear down pretty Man, quickly. I barely got it. I'm gonna wear him down. I'm not sure who's gonna wear out first going around that boat, David. You got that right. I'm done wore out walking around the boat. <laughs> His fish is not big, but he's just, I'm telling you, he's barely hooked. He's still leading him around the boat, trying to wear him down, keep him from jumping. All right, boy, got him in the boat. Boy, he was barely hooked. Got him in. That's number seven. That gives him the limit. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back with the weigh-in results for day two of the 1993 Bassmasters Classic World Championship from Birmingham, Alabama. This day two weigh in of the 1993 Classic looks like a showdown between the front runners. Veteran pro Tommy Piffle of Oklahoma and David Fritz, the North Carolina first time Classic contender. Several pre tournament favorites like defending champion Bob Hamilton have faded into also ran status. But anything can happen. And Paul Elias, the 1982 world champion, is the comeback story today. He needs 20 pounds, to, no, he needs 21 pounds and 15 ounces to take the lead. Will he make it? 21 pounds and eight ounces! 18, 15, let's give him a hand. Boy, that is big time by Larry Williams had the big bass yesterday. Today, he's got a big weight. Remember, you gotta have to take the lead. 14 pounds, 11 ounces. You did that easily. You take the lead. 16 pounds, 13 ounces. There you are, your new leader for the classic, folks. Like that, he's gonna move More limits are coming in today. Shaw Grigsby in 12th place yesterday will move up in the standings. Watch this creel. He needs 1812 to take the lead. 16 pounds in 12. He is now, what is that? Two pounds off the lead, folks. Now it's up to Tommy Biffle, yesterday's leader. He's got seven backs, the limit. Now remember, you've got to have 10 pounds, 10 ounces to reclaim the lead, and you have 11 pounds and one ounce, he's taking the lead over. What a close race this is going to be. And George Cochran is two pounds and 12 ounces behind you. There's a bunch of good ones behind me. Paul, Paul Elias is only three pounds and two ounces. Best thing, they're behind me. But there's Not one challenger team. left to hey, weigh in, David Fritz. Come on now. Come on out there with a big bass. Two big bass. Watch your weight now. Remember, this could give you the lead, and it does. He's got 14 pounds and nine ounces. You have taken the lead in the Bassmasters Classic. I really had a chance to, to blow this thing open. If everything goes right, I can catch that a little more tomorrow, maybe. 
can do that, you'll probably win this classic. All the best to you. That's confidence. Thanks. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back with final round action in the greatest fishing show on earth, the Bassmasters Classic World Championship. Oh, oh was that a terrible boat flip or what? The final round of the 1993 Bassmasters Classic. Fog. Bassmaster Tournament Director Dewey Kendrick says there'll be at least a 30-minute delayed start. Weather conditions worry Tommy Biffle. You know, I don't think a little more mud, I don't think it hurt, I don't think it can get like the James River did to me uh, in 90. Bites me today. David I, Fritz I, I has problems well, too. I, I need to catch every fish that bites me. It's, uh, it's getting a little harder every day to catch a lemon. It's probably going to be harder today because of the, the boat traffic. Larry Williams, only 3 pounds, 12 ounces off the lead, is anxious. If it does lift and, and still stays cloudy, I'll be all right. I'd like to be fishing though right now. I mean, I, I could be getting them right now good. David Fritz has a 3 pound, 4 ounce lead. With every minute's delay, his chances to win this classic improve. But any angler in the top 10 standings could pull it out. Finally, 45 minutes behind schedule, day three is underway. And David Fritz gets started fast. He's fishing less than a mile from the takeoff point. David is back in the spot that he started every morning. Uh, this is his, his first spot that he makes every morning. Now, I really just stumbled on it by accident. And uh, it's got a little shelf like a road bed or something. It runs all the way across. And uh, it's just got a little depression. But I'm sitting in about nine foot, throwing in about five foot. And this spot, there's one little spot in there those fish are holding on. and, and and I'm pretty sure it's a rock, because it afraid my line up quite a bit. Maybe the difference between winning and losing before the day is over. The fish are biting right now for David. There's no telling what would have happened if he could have got here early this morning. The sun is coming up, shad activity on the water, and the bass are feeding for David. Larry Williams is fishing a floating, swimming worm. <sighs> Well, he bit like a big one. The bite is slower this morning for Tommy Biffle. He's using a rattleback jig with a noise attractor in the muddy water. That'll work. Tournament leader David Fritz has hooked up again. Oh, boat, if you'll notice, he's uh, really pulling he's and tugging. He's, David says he's an awful good fish. <laughs> but if he can wear him down, just lead him around and wear him down, then he can get his hands on him. Stay on. <laughs> yeah. David's got him. Yeah, it's a good fish, I'll tell you. That, that's a good one. David needed that fish. We're figuring that this is going to give David three bass that weigh approximately six and a half to possibly seven pounds. And he's on his way to an awful good day because it's only 18 minutes after seven. He's got a lot of time left. Shaw Grigsby started in fourth place this morning, and this Whatever fish is, could be worth several thousands of dollars if he can just Good land God, it. Look at this bass. Oh, my goodness. No, darling. My. Take it. Okay, here we go. One, two. Golly, oh, what a hog. Yeah. He's got a good and they're on. still biting for David Fritz. His crankbait this is working. Key. That'll help him. Little one. Shaw Grigsby is fishing an underwater hump now, and it's paying off. Did you drop the marker? <laughs> you dog. <laughs> Take pictures later. Drop the marker now. Is that a terrible boat flip or what? David Fritz has just hooked another bass. He's returned to the same spot he started out in this morning where he caught uh, three, of his, uh, uh, three of his keepers, and he's got a good fish on. I can't tell, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's pulling hard. Yeah. David thinks yeah. it's a good one. 
<laughs> He's walking around the boat again, trying to wear him down. Yeah. Watch out, Steve. Boy, I have barely got him, too. They've been grabbing the back hook on him, and they hard to land when you get them like that. He sure needs this fish. He's had a long dry spell for about two and a half hours. He had to put a bass in the boat. And he has to have a limit today to win the Bassmaster Classic. Come on, Benny. The whole fish is really pulling hard. Uh, he's got him. There you go. I'll tell you what, that fish will help to maintain his lead. David Pritz is a happy fisherman right now. He's just returned to his starting out point where he started this morning. He caught three fish, and he caught a real good fish, about two to two and a quarter pounds. And that's going to kick Dave, David up around, uh, around 10 pounds. He's got five bass in the live well now. Needs two more for the limit. Shaw Grigsby has located a concentration of bass. He's going to be a threat to win this classic in the final hours. He knocked the fire out of this bait. My whole line went slack. I mean, he hit it, and then it, then it went totally straight. Slack, golly. Just have it all down in you. Oh, baby. David Fritz has changed locations again. Good, that's the one I need. God almighty! David really needs this fish if he's gonna win the Classic. He's got to put this fish in the boat. Every day of fishing, you'll have a key fish. A lot of days, you'll have a key fish to hit, and, and you must land him when that happens. Oh, he's a good one. Looks he's like he's hooked good, though. Things may be in David's favor here. He's going to try to wear him down. He's sure wild. God, what a fish. You run him around the boat. Wear him down with that real light action rod. David's using a real light action rod that has a lot of give, a lot of forgiveness. And... Oh, he's a nice one. Trying to get Jesus. his hands on him. He's Woo! got him. There you go. Hot I'll almighty. tell you what. That's the one I've been looking for. Back back Another strike for Shaw Grigsby. He's moving up near the lead with over 14 pounds in his live well already. He needs this fish in the boat if he's to catch the leader, David Fritz. This could be a drum. No, it's a bass. No! Jay Yellis, who started today in eighth place, has suddenly got a hot hand. He's boated over 14 pounds of bass and catching fish on back-to-back -back casts. He's located a feeding school along a river ledge. Time is running short. David Fritz may have the classic crown, the winning fish on his line. And Tommy Martin, the 1974 classic champion, calls the play-by-play. -play. Come on, man, he don't come off. He's got a really a good fish on here. This fish could be the clincher. Oh, my God. This is the fish I need right here. Those old largemouth are strong right at first. They, they don't have a lot of endurance, but they're really strong. You've got to wear them down before you can get your hands on them. The worst thing he'd try to do is get the fish up too quick. Well, he circled the boat one time, and he, he wore him down. He's bringing him up, see if he can get his hands on him. Got to be able to get his hands on him. Of course, again, he's trying to keep his hands away from that crankbait, too. 
David there has the fish. Is, right there. there he is. That's him. The Bassmasters will be right back. Showtime. The Bassmasters Classic Final Wave. The greatest fishing show in the world. More hoopla than a four ring circus. Complete with a knockout laser light show. Aerial stunts. Big screen TVs. Nationally known singing stars. Leap and laser lunker bass. A standing room only full house of over 18,000 Bassin fans. And Ray Scott, the BASS founder and waymaster, riding a real circus trained elephant. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the top finishers in the 1993 World Championship of Bass Fishing. All right, as an element, folks, he's got a chance to take this lead. He's going back in the well. How much does he need? Wait, right now. Seven bass, all alive. His weight. That's it. He's taking the lead. 13 pounds, two ounces. 13, two. First round leader Tommy Biffle has been so close to taking the classic prize, and it slipped away again. But he'll finish high up the leaderboard. And that might be it. That is a pretty darn good spotty bass. Won't quite make you need 10 pounds and one ounce. You're just a little short, nine pounds and eight ounces. But that's still going to give you, where well, you're going to be in second, I'm sure, with that. But now, what, uh, what are your plans for next year? You'll be on the trail, of course. Yeah, uh, just fish hard and uh, try to come back next year. We'll have a big payday waiting for you. All right, here we go. Thank you so much. Nice hand, folks. Tommy Biffle. In eighth place from Jasper, Texas, Jay Yellis, fishing his third Bass Masters Classic. You know, the lake's full of fish, and today I was just kind of in a pretty good groove, and I just, you know, had a good day. I just couldn't get any big bites. It was kind of frustrating. All right, here we go. Let's weigh him. A limit of seven bass. And the weight. He has taken the lead. 15 pounds, three ounces. You have just taken the lead in the Bass Masters Classic. Now, here's a fella who's got a chance to win it also. He's got to have about 12 and a half pounds if he has a hope to. Shaw Grigsby of Gainesville, Florida. Let's have a nice welcome. He was fourth place yesterday. Well, here, how about that one for a nice little spot? All right, hey, hold that one up. Let's see, let's show the beat. Oh, that may be it. That may be the one that breaks the basket. So, Greg, hold him up for the B team, Shaw. How about the B team? Let's all stand up one time. This, this, he needs 12 pounds and eight ounces, and if only one, who's left? Fritz? Fritz, the only one left? All right, only one guy left. He has six bass alive, am I correct? Yes. All right, he needs 12 pounds and eight ounces. You ready? 14 pounds, two ounces. i tell you what, Ray, this was my first fish of the day, and when I caught it, I said, well, I'm, I'm tied with Fritz right now. Now I just got to beat him, you know? We're going to see. I think I'm going to give him a good run here. He may just be the winner. All right, we won't know for a minute. Let's bring him in right now. David Fritz, never won a Bassmasters Classic from Lexington, North Carolina. yesterday. David Fritz. He's fishing his first ever Bassmasters Classic, although he's been on our tour for about three or four years. He did not have very many. All right, now. He's, he's, he's right there. Now if he reaches back in there, we're, we're going to be stepping down here real quick, right? <laughs> it was nice being there. Oh, he's done. That's it. Now he's gone back in the well. Gone back in the well. Standing up, B-team, everybody, stand up where you can see what's happening. Here you go! There's your winner of the Bass Masters Classic. He's smoking, as always. Great, great, great fisherman. Folks, there's your winner of the Bass Masters Classic. No question about it. David Fritz of Lexington, North Carolina. Fantastic, dude. Let's get down here and weigh it, right? Come on down here, son. Bring those fish. We're going to check the weight. All right, here we go. We're coming to the scales. We have seven bass, a full limit. Wait. That's it, buddy. 16 pounds. Three hours a day, you win it. Bass, Folks, this is something that every man that loves fishing dreams of. He is a winner of the Bass Masters Classic.
How do you feel? You're still trembling. Ray, this is a new experience for an old country boy that had dreams about fishing this tournament back four or five years ago. You know, I'm I'm just like everybody sitting in those stands wishing they was down here, and that's sort of the way it's been for me, but I knew in my mind one of these days I was going to make it. What do you owe this to? Well, I really owe this tournament to my sponsors and my family, and also I owe it to all these fans out here that's been rooting for me. David Fritz, the winner and champion of the 1993 Bassmasters Classic, an impressive seven pound victory margin, 21 bass weighing 48 pounds, six ounces, and a good old boy who has made good. We hope you've enjoyed this special presentation of the Bassmasters, the 23rd annual World Championship of Bass Fishing. And we hope you'll be on board when the Bassmasters regular series programming returns on January 2nd, 1994. The Bassmasters has been brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. Ranger Boats, we still build them one at a time. Motor Guide, the choice of serious fishermen. Johnson Outboards, wouldn't it be nice if everything else were as dependable as your Johnson Outboard? Kelly Tires, where you get a good deal on a great tire. Browning, Lose, Pose, the winning combination. Wrangler, the official jeans and shirts of the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. DuPont Strand Fishing Line. Parts Plus, America's family of auto parts stores. Berkeley Power Baits, fortified with flavor and scent enhancers so powerful fish just won't let go. Man's Bait Company, over 25 years of innovation. The Alabama Bureau of Tourism and Travel. And the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, the world's largest bass fishing organization.